Ladies and gentlemen, pull up a chair. This is Ryan, once again, with the Roundtable of Wraith. And we have another Dromai deck deck video for you all. Uh, I am uh, electing to do the top-down video here, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! style, if you will. Uh, Levi's been doing it on the channel, so I kind of wanted to join in on the cool kid uh, trend. Show you guys some top-down collection video, but also... Kind of go over like my current deck uh, and talk about Dromai in general. Uh, this is going to be an interesting deck tech because uh, Dromai has been an interesting hero none the least. She is still without question my favorite hero in the game that I've played thus far. I feel like I've put a lot of work into this deck. Um, and the cool part about Dromai, or I guess if you're a competitive player, the downside of Dromai is she is not you know, just good. She's not here are her cards and you get to play these cards and she's going to roll over all the other heroes uh, a la Fi. I'm not going to dog anybody else on this channel. Uh, <coughs> Jim. <coughs> uh, but she is proven to be a lot more difficult to play. Uh, she rewards preparation. She rewards uh, good play. Uh, I think she's an extremely complicated hero to play, uh, and uh, the deck building process has been frustrating, rewarding, frustrating, rewarding. It's just been a it's been a process, uh, and I think she's going to continue to evolve that way. Um, where she's positioned right now in the meta, uh, I think she is strong. Into, I shouldn't say strong. She's good into a lot of matchups. Or she is 50-50 into a lot of matchups. She's favorable into some. Uh, I think Fi is, you know, her worst matchup. I think a lot of people that have been playing her uh, can attest to that. I know uh, people that are likely to consume this video or watch this video uh, probably have watched other videos. And, uh, you know, the sentiment's the same, right? If you're going to a competitive event as of right now and you're expecting Fi to be, I don't know, 40 30 40 50 percent of the field uh i think she's a very difficult hero to play um is she viable i i think so i i think she's a very solid like b tier a tier hero uh somewhere around there is she s tier no she's not what prism is and uh for the people that think that she is you know prism she just i think the biggest there's there's two big drawbacks with Dromai right now, uh, not I, I shouldn't say drawback. I I, I think Prism is kind of the 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 outlier, right? She's got Spectra. I think that keyword is I, I've said it before on on previous uh, previous videos. I think the Spectra keyword in general is just horrible for the game, um, and Prism has that. Dromai doesn't, which I think that's fair. Like, I want to play a fair hero. Like, I'm not right now, as of right now, I'm not going to the Pro Tour France. It's not, that's not going to change. In the future, I'm going to be trying to go for, like, you know, professional events and stuff like that. Uh, this year with, uh, you know, personal things, I, I wasn't able to, to go to those things. I, I did not qualify for nationals, so I won't be going there as Levi and Sam and other teammates are going to that. So that's cool. Um, so, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the life of Dromai without having the pressure of going to those higher end tournaments. Um, but, you know, I am looking towards playing Dromai at, you know, semi-professional and professional events in the future. Like if next year I'm going to go out, I'm going to try to qualify for these things. I'm going to have more time in my hands. Um, I will be looking to play Dromai, uh, most likely unless another hero comes out that, uh, you know, really catches my eye. But I've committed a lot of not only time and effort, but I've com committed a lot of money towards Dromai as well, which is a, beside from the point, that's a that's a me thing. Um, and I, I, I did that because I see the potential there. I think she's got a couple of cards coming to her in the next set that are going to really kind of help her out. Uh, James... White hinted at that 
Um, and I, I can only speculate at this point. I kind of have an idea of what's coming or I, I have a speculation of what's coming. I'm not going to speculate on that right now. Uh, that'll be for a different video. Um, but as of right now, I'm going to give you my current deck tech video, right? This is what I think uh, plays pretty well. I've tested this deck. I've played it against all types of matchups. I've actually beaten Fi on this deck. Um, it, it's not consistent by any by any measure, uh, quite the opposite. But uh, I have a good matchup into a lot of other decks. So um, the reason I chose to do the top down video today instead of, uh, you know, having the video in my list, I think it's a little bit cooler of a thing. I get to show off some some neat things that I that I've collected over the last set. And uh, I get to talk through some of my choices a little bit better uh, instead of kind of rambling on different cards. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I am shifting my, my deck. And this is the problem I think people have with deck techs online. Uh, my disclaimer is this is towards my meta, right? Um, my meta is very competitive. It's very diverse. Uh, it doesn't necessarily represent the metas of other people that create draw my decks. Um, a lot of videos that I've been personally watching about Dromai, uh, have talked about, you know, the lack of Fi or the lack of Wizard. Well, I know you guys are fans of the channel that are watching this. I have Levi in my, my meta. He's an insane Icelander player. So I have cards in here that are specifically tailored towards Icelander because I know that if I were to go to a tournament locally, even an armory, Levi's there with Icelander and I have to prepare for that matchup. So, uh, other people that don't have to worry about Icelander or you're playing Icelanders that aren't necessarily as good as Levi, uh, you might not have to like tech as heavily as I have uh, towards that matchup. So uh, don't take this as gospel. This is not uh, a definitive Dromai deck list. This is what I have developed. This is what I've tested based on who I talk to, who I play with, um, and just the, the my local scene. So... I think the core is there. I think if you were to, to look at my uh, my core deck um, and you were to build Dromai from the ground up, I think the, the, the core is there and you would have some success. Uh, but again, I think this is a relatively challenging deck to play. Uh, I don't think this is a, a pick up and just put auras on the board or swing at Herald deck like you know we've been kind of spoiled with Illusionist in the past. This is uh, much more challenging. Uh, so this is uh, my drum deck, and uh, with, without further ado, uh, I'll, I'll put away these uh, the marvels here. I've got, I've got many more where those come, came from. So um, I apologize for the shadow and the glare. Uh, I was working on the lighting this weekend, and then, you know, things happened, so I didn't get it fixed. But whatever. Here we go. So we're going to start off with the equipment. So we got drum eye. You're tuning in this video because you know what she does. She's cool. Uh, she's the dragon queen. Uh, she poops out dragons, which is the coolest part. So here's my my base equipment set. So Crown of Providence, first and foremost, is the most insane card ever. Um, I love this as a headpiece. Uh, I know that people like Skullcap. Dromai, what I have kind of geared towards is uh, a defensive hero and crown of providence isn't the most defensive option that we have in the slot uh skullcap has an extra block but providence just allows you to kind of get out of jail free which is i think more valuable it's a two block whenever you need it it's you don't have to worry about being down on health or whatever and Joe my blocks really well so there are times that I have found when I was testing Skullcap where I was ahead in health because she blocks so well and because, you know, they're attacking dragons. Or even when I want to commit a block with my equipment, sometimes I found that I was ahead on health. So Crown of Providence is there just as the two block when you need it, and it gets rid of a, a an arsenal card. I usually, I usually save this for when I have an arsenal card because then that gives me an extra card in my hand where I need to block with. Um, if I stuff a dragon down there that I know that I can't afford or maybe for whatever reason I run into Ash, which usually I don't do. Uh, Ash management's a big part of this deck. Uh, Providence bails me out. So 
I don't run another headpiece. I only run Providence in every matchup. I don't slot in another one. Even against Wizard, you'll see my null rune choice. Um, I only run Providence just because of the ability to get a card out of Arsenal and give me an extra card in hand to block with. So Providence is so good. If you don't have it, I know it's expensive. I've talked about this before. You don't have to buy this, but I would not play without it. Uh, but Skullcap is a good option. So if you don't have Providence yet and you only have Skullcap, it's not a, a, a huge downgrade. The ability on Providence is just so good to where I don't want to not have it. Uh, my main chess piece is Furnace. So uh, one of the things that you know you might see when you're looking at other decks is that people are running Tunic, and that's not a, a bad option. However, I think it's a build around. If you're running Tunic, I think by definition, you're playing a little bit more aggressively, I should say, which is weird because Tunic is every once in three turns. So it kind of sounds like it would be more of a defensive card. But the thing with Furnace is it bails you out if you have like a dead hand, let's say turn zero, where your opponent attacks you and you don't want to block with uh footsteps because maybe they're swinging at a, a, like a, a, a six at you or something like that. Let's say you're playing like a brute. You can block with a defense reaction. We run sigils in this deck. We run respites in this deck. So you have an option to play a defense reaction, to play a sigil, to play a respite in this, like on your opponent's turn and then pitch a card for furnace and create an ash on your opponent's turn. Otherwise, if you're playing aggressively, on your turn, you can pitch one, play like a Spears, and then pitch a uh, another red for two resources, play a Dragon for two, play a, an Ember Maw, play a Command and Conquer, something like that. The block for two, the block for one is very good. Uh, I've talked about Furnace before, but in playing uh, and in testing, I would not run Tunic. I am a very big Flamescale Furnace uh, truther. Um, I don't like Tunic in... Uh, draw my deck people that run tunic i think have to mold the deck a little bit differently so if you are a tunic guy if you're a tunic i should say person um you're not necessarily wrong i just think you have to play the deck a little bit differently i think you have to build the deck a little bit differently and that's uh that's your choice i don't run anything other than furnace um leg slot uh phantasmal footsteps i am still convinced these are the best footsteps for draw my they don't do it uh, like as much as they did for prism however uh i think what they do bring is just invaluable uh giving your ability or the having the ability to block with them to pitch a red and create an ash on your opponent's turn uh and then have that block there for the rest of the turn is huge and then you know there are times where your opponent you know late game where they'll block or try to break a doom breaker or try to break like an ember maw and you have the opportunity to pitch a red to you know keep going and then attack with dragon so uh footsteps huge deal um my arm pieces here and this is where it kind of gets a little bit maybe different than what people are accustomed to the main arm piece that i run is silken form so silken form is you know really good it's got quell which quell is crazy you know it kind of effectively cancels out uh, attack reactions if they were coming at you for like one extra you can quell it and kind of prevent their on hits like you know let's say a katu you block perfectly and they play uh ancestral empowerment you can then uh quell it and then still create an ash wing and they don't get their on hit for uh katsu so uh, the quell keyword is you know we know it's good it's very it's been very good these are my main four okay um the ability to create an ash wing whenever you need it, uh, maybe to pressure an opponent uh, for an extra one damage where they might have been out of cards or whatever, or they don't want to block it, is very good. Um, in the mirror, this is very good strategically. Breaking your your uh, silken form and creating an ash wing um, is really, really, really important in the mirror um, c c because board control is so essential. Um, but yeah, Silken Form is very, very, very good as the arm piece. Um, and then my sideboards, did I put that one away? I don't know where it went. My sideboards, 
sorry, uh, technical difficulties here. I don't know where, oh, there it is. Okay, so my sideboards, uh, Ghostly Touch is my first sideboard. So I love the Ghostly Touch package. Uh, I run the Ghostly Touch package for Guardian specifically. Um, I think Guardian is uh, not a difficult matchup. I played it a few times um, and I've had some really good success. It's a little bit harder than Prism because, again, you don't have Spectra. So when they swing at your dragons, they get to kind of keep going if they want to. But Guardians usually only attack for one big attack. Uh, and if they're ignoring your little dragons or popping them, whatever, um, that's fine. You can get this thing up to, you know, 20. I've, I've had it at most, I think, 18, 19. And then it becomes just a huge threat late game. So as long as you're like playing defensively, you're you know protecting against those huge crush effects and things like that, your ghostly touch gets out of control because they're going to be popping your dragons and they're going to be doing things like that. And paired with semblance, if you're pitch stacking correctly, this thing gets out of control and then it becomes a massive game ender. So ghostly touch, I think, is absolutely necessary in those matchups. Um, you don't necessarily need them. There's been plenty of games where I've played against Guardian where I haven't needed them, uh, but they've been sitting there with like, you know, 18, 19, and I've still won the game. Um, but they are just that insurance policy because, you know, if you're quelling one off of a, you know, crippling crush or something like that, it's not the biggest deal. But having this in the bank when you need it is just so important. Um, and then my other, my last piece of equipment is Null Rune Gloves. So that's the third glove slot that I run. Um, and I used to run Crown of Provenance, or no, I'm sorry, Crown of Reflection. But against Viscerai, specifically, you still want the defense of Crown of Provenance. And taking that away for Crown of Reflection just felt so bad. But you still need one Null Rune just in case because they can attack your Ash Wings and still do their Mauve Rain Sky nonsense, and you really don't have any counterplay. Having Null Rune Gloves instead of uh, Crown of Reflection, Reflection I'm sorry, uh, allows you to you know pitch away and kind of stop their Rune Chance from really getting out of control. Um, and Providence is still there to block some like really bad on hits with Furnace. So like if they're coming out with you with like a a meet and greet or a consuming volition, something like that, where you need equipment block, you still have those available to you instead of giving up crown of providence for crown of reflection, where now you don't have any equipment block. So I think no rune gloves is probably the correct um, answer for if you're trying to run no rune in, in your uh, main board. Um, and even against like wizard, like against Icelander, right? Silken Forum is good because it can create you a, a um, an Ashwing on the spot, but you have other cards in your deck that do that, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the instant ability and then losing your Quell. I'd rather have the consistency of Null Rune um, that's just always there that they can't really get rid of. And then, obviously, the last card is this lowly, non-Cold Foil Storm of Sandakai that will be upgraded uh, shortly by the next armory so equipment suite uh i i like this where it's at right now uh wouldn't change it i would not go back to crown of reflection because of the reasons that i stated but those are that's where i'm at currently um and i think i i hesitate to say the word correct uh but i, I that this feels better than uh any other equipment suite that i have run um We'll start off then with the main deck. So this is the core, uh, and I'm going to start off with the dragons. So we're going to start off with the big three. So ignore my my hideous non-Marvel uh, Optimi. I have one right here. Um, I have duplicates of everything except for Optimi right now. I have six of the other ones. Uh and just I, I, the Optimi is the last chase. I'm not spending $400 as of this video for a second Optimi, but um, I run all three of the big guys uh, in the main deck. This Tomaltai swings so many matchups. 
not just the five matchup. That's the obvious one, right? If you can get him out early and kill Mask of Momentum or Pouncing Links, um, you're in a better spot. Not focusing on the bad matchup. He just takes so much tempo from a lot of people, right? If you're killing a Furnace in the Mirror or you're killing uh, Cornet Peak or uh, Storm Striders in the Wizard matchup or the Icelander matchup, which I've tested a bunch, um, or like Snapdragons, things like that, he just swings. Like he is such a big threat. And then he's still got five health. A lot of times, if they don't have a popper in hand, he becomes main target. So then not only is he killing a key piece of equipment that's likely their win con, he's also um, adding five health to yourself. So the whole thing about this deck, right, is patience and reading your opponent. And, you know, unfortunately right now it's dodging poppers and kind of getting lucky. And if he does that, then he becomes target number one. So he's, you know, adding five health to yourself, which is amazing, right? We want to add, we want to add health because then they're not attacking you. But yeah, Tomatai is very good. Uh, not reliable because obviously he's one of, but when he does come down and does do his job, he's insane. Dominia is easier to get down because she's a four cost, not a five cost. Again, she's just really, really, really good at what she does. She adds four health to you um, and banishing a card from the other. It's arguably better than Tomaltai because there you get to get rid of a threat or get rid of a popper uh, or just really, really muck up their turn. Either way, she's, you know, really good. Um, and again, I, I don't run. I mean, you can't run more than them, but or more than one, but I would run her and him in every single matchup. Uh, Atomai is now that I've added more blues to this deck, he is just insane. He doesn't come down every matchup, but when he does, he alters the matchup in such a way that, uh, you're just, he puts you so far ahead. Um, even if they have a popper, like with these two, like you can kind of like, okay, if they have a popper, whatever, I got an equipment. Okay. I can see their popper. I can get rid of it. If they have a popper with him, usually on average, he's doing four damage for Ar four arcane, I should say, and then threatening six physical. So they're taking four usually um, or six. There's a lot of times where I've gotten six off with him and that just feels insane. Um, and then if they don't have a popper, he's still six physical and six is really hard for a lot of decks to get to right now, aside from like guardian, but with Guardian, you kind of want to pitch stack him and wait until you have like a semblance or wait until you kind of have run them out of poppers. Um, and he becomes a win con at the end of the game because they usually only run barrier one against you. Um, but yeah, Optimi has, I, I was sideboarding him for slower matchups and now he's kind of come back into every matchup. And if he gets down, if you just draw into two blues with him and you can get him down, he's crazy he just swings matchups and that's what he's there for i never feel bad about blocking with him i never feel bad about pitching him um he's not somebody that i force to get down whereas like dominia i might arsenal and try to get her down even total in the right matchup i'll try to arsenal him and try to get him down and then if i get stuck i can block with crown of providence and get him out of there um Atomai, i won't rarely force um but if he does come down naturally He's just such a swing. And then if you if you play a longer game and you can pitch stack him with two blues and like a semblance or something like that, and you can get him down and uh, ensure that he's getting through, he's going to win you the game. If you get to second cycle and you have pitch stacked appropriately, he wins you the game. So uh, Optimi is just very, very good. Uh, I, I don't think people that aren't running him, I think you have to run him. Um, and again, his downside is he's a three block with red pitch so like that's mainly every other card in your deck and if you pitch him for like a spears or you pitch him for a doom breaker or something like that it's it's whatever like he's just really 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 good um as for the rest of the base dragons so i run three asvelize three uh chrome eyes so uh we run the zero costers um 
because they're zero cost dragons. This whole deck is dragons. You have to be careful with their ash management with these guys. Uh, if you're at one ash, you know, it. you have to kind of get creative about your next turn or you pitch for furnace and then you can make an ash afterwards. But um, Asvali is really good at finishing games because he deals one arcane when he attacks. So if your opponent's at one and they don't have barrier, you win the game. Um, he's really good in the mirror because he can kill two ash wings and then still attack. So like if they have a board of three ash wings, you can kill two ash wings with his arcane and then one ash wing with his actual attack. So you just clear their board with one card. So a lot of times in the mirror, you sandbag him, you keep him a little bit, you play him after they've raked and then you play as and then you clear their board. And now you have uh, a full, you know, a big dragon out, um, that they have to deal with on their next turn. And you still have two more in your deck. Chromai, I, I mean, he's just Chromai. He's really good in everything. Attacks for three. If they pop him, you still have an action point. He's a zero cost, so he gets everybody going anyway. Um, so if, he, if they don't pop him, he's a two health dragon uh, that they have to deal with because they don't want you to keep getting that ability. So he adds two health to you. So yeah, Chromai is really, really good. Uh, obviously. And then my one costers, we play three Kyloria. Uh, Kyloria is the Snatch Dragon. Uh, she, again, very good. She just, you know, kind of, they, people don't like leaving her out on the table. When she hits down, you know, she's a, a one for four, which is awesome. Steal an item slash steal a, a, or draw a card, uh, which is just such a good ability. Again, two health that's added to you, and they have to deal with her. They don't want to let you do that again. Uh, then we run three Yendera, Yenderai in the main. So Yenderai, uh, I talked about him before. He was, you know, I was down on him right away, and then his resiliency is just what keeps him kind of going. The problem that I found with Yenderai is my testing against Jim, obviously against Phi, uh, if they do have Shuko and they target him with their second Shuko ability, Shuko prevents or prevents you prevent or pre prevents you from preventing damage. So if they attack him with like a Phoenix Flame on their second one cost or less, uh, it not only knocks off the counter, but it also deals the damage. So that's a little bit of a weird interaction that you have to be aware of. Um, and that's kind of where Yenrai has his downfall. But he's good everywhere else. He's a one for essentially six health that deals three damage. Um, he the, the opponents love popping him because it's a lot of value for them. So be careful when you swing him. A lot of times I'll just cast him and like, you know, maybe bait out a popper with like ash wings or something like that. Or I'll just not swing with him. Uh, so be careful with him because they love popping him. They like popping Kyloria too because that's also good value. But just have, you know, backup plans in, in case they do do that. And then my last main, or I shouldn't say my last, but, and then we got Mirror Guy. Mirror Guy is, you know, I, I, I've been going back and forth with sideboarding him against non-poppers and poppers, but I just feel like everyone's running poppers. So his value kind of just increases. He's a one for two, but the, the, the first dragon attack just goes through. So it's nice to have that insurance in the main deck. He's also four health. So if they were to, if they do want to get rid of him, it's kind of committing a bit of resources on their part. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think you want to main him pretty much in every deck. I don't think I was, you know, toying with siding him out against Phi and stuff like that. But even when Phi's not running poppers, they still have to commit four attacks to kill him, which is, or four damage worth of attacks to kill him which is good if they're drawing mask off that you know they're not doing damage that's four less damage that you're dealing or that they're dealing to you so uh overall i think that's fine um and i i have moved him up to the main board i i run him in every matchup now um and then the last two dragons these are new and again i apologize for the non-marvel versions they're they're in the mail um but two Necria, I've been really, really hesitant on this card 
I uh, have not been as high on this card as other people have been, but I have recently taken out some reds and added some more blues, and so Necria becomes a lot more playable. Uh, Necria is a lot better in matchups where, you know, you're not expecting poppers, like, you know, Fi, I keep going back to that, or Icelander. I know that, you know, Levi specifically runs a lot of poppers, but Necria is going to be uh, value over time. Um, gaining an Ash every time uh, she deals damage or if she's dealt damage is pretty big. Um, the commitment is there, but also she kind of repays you for playing her. So uh, a seven health, uh, four attack. She's a big, she's got a, a big butt. She's got a big, big swing. So the two of Necria uh, main board, um, this isn't super tested, but it's something that uh, I love the theory of, especially with more blues. And um, I think she's just going to generate value. So I, I like the two of Necria. I don't think I would go up to three. I know a lot of people are running three, that top eight list. Uh, Jamie Falkner or Faulkner was running three. Um, and I, I'm I'm just not there yet. Uh, I can see myself going up to three eventually, depending on how she tests. But I think that's kind of a bit of a risk, especially because I'm maining Optimi as well. Um, but those are the main deck dragons. So I run quite a bit. Um, and I mean, like I, I, I've said in previous videos, if you're not running dragons, then why are we playing Dromai? Um, that's kind of what it boils down to. Uh, and then main deck, everything else. So my main deck attacks. So Doombreakers and uh, uh, Spears are the one for fives. I think this is just good value, right? Like one for five, it's above rate with go again. I know if you're pitching a red, it kind of feels bad, I guess, because, you know, you're not generating like usually like with chain, right? You play a one for four with a blue and then you can play another one for four with go again with a blue or with that same blue. And now you're doing nine, whereas usually you're play, pitching a red and now you're one for five. You got to pitch another card for a one for five, whatever it is. Furnace gives you a little bit of leeway because you can, you know, hit with this and then pitch for furnace for now a two coster to finish the chain. Um, I just like these because it's just really good rate. A lot of times I find my opponents don't pop these because they're saving for the dragons. Um, and if they're taking five damage with go again, then it kind of opens up your play a little bit. You don't have to play a dragon if you don't want to. Um, a lot of times, you know, you pitch this, and then you pitch a, a red for Furnace, and then you command a conquer. So now you got a five that went through, and then a six that they have to respond to, and that kind of ruins their turn a little bit, uh, which is nice. Um, if you do have a blue, like if you have a bunch of ash, you don't have to pitch the red. There are so many times where I pitch a blue, five go again, five go again dragon and now you're swinging for you know 13 to 14 if you have kyloria so that's pretty good so not only are you swinging for 14 but now you're adding your health or adding to your health by four and if kyloria hits now you're drawing a card and who knows what you can do with that so um i'm a little bit down on spears i will admit um you know, if we if we get more cards or, you know, if I want to be more defensive, Spears is probably going to be the one that I look to cut first. Um, Doombreaker, the only reason I don't cut this is because if they do pop it, you get an Ash. So you get you get generation on the back, uh, whereas this you just have to pitch for, for uh, uh, footsteps and then you might not have, you know, another follow up. Who knows? Depending on your hand. Um, but. Yeah, I, I like those as my one for fives. Uh, they're still pretty good rate. They're good value. Um, and yeah, I, I I I still like them. I know some people don't necessarily like the the Spears. Faulkner, I think, didn't play any of these, which is, I think is interesting, but he did well. So I can't necessarily question where he's at. Uh, sweeping blows, I think, are... I, not I think, but they're absolutely core for every drum I list. I think it's just the one of the best cards. You know, pitch a red, one for three, go again. They can't pop it. You create two ash. I mean, that's what we need in this list. We need ash generation, and that's like the best card to generate ash. Uh, two 
Ember Maws. This is another card where I think I can cut. Um, these are red Ember Maws, if you can't see that. Um, but, you know, I've had a lot of success against Fi, especially playing two for eights. A lot of times they think, okay, I'm going to take the one for five. Oh, you're coming at me for eight more. Usually they think it's like, okay, I'm going to do five more or I'm going to do a dragon or whatever it is. And then you swing at them for eight and it's kind of an oh shit moment. Um, I had all three in and a lot of times, you know, I was blocking out and you can't play this card. So that's why I went down to two. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, you know, Ember Ma is pretty good. I like having this turn one because they're going to be blocking out anyway. So if I pitch two reds to play an Ember Maw and just swing for eight, create two ash, arsenal card, and now it's their turn. They block it out because they're going to block out everything that I do anyway. And um, it sets me up for my next turn pretty, or actually the rest of the game. Like if you're good at ash management, two ash can like last you. Like you're going up and down with one cost dragons the whole game. Two ash can last a long time. So uh ember Ma is a good starter uh and eight's awkward to block like sometimes you catch five with like you know uh, if they drew a phoenix flame and an art of war or something like that they can't fully block it so now you're you know doing four damage to start off the game which every bit of damage counts against them um but yeah ember Ma is really solid i think um but again you don't have to run it if there are other cards there's other Whenever I tweak my deck, I always put Ember Maw off to the side and look for other cards that I think are better. And I'm like, okay. So, like, if we get better cards or if we get, you know, if the, the meta changes or whatever it is, Ember Maw could come out of the list. I wouldn't, I would cut Ember Maw before I cut Spears. But as of right now, I like both of them in the, the main deck. Um, the non attacks, Sigil, I still run three. I think it's just so good with Dromai. I, I, I love this card. Adding nine health to a defensive deck is pretty crazy. It turns on all the dragons. You can play it, you know, when your opponent thinks they're going to beat you. Yeah, you, you arsenal it doesn't feel bad because if they command and conquer, you just play it and you're fine. So I love running three sigils. Uh, adding, you know, six to nine health every game really goes a long way. Uh, I run two burn them alls. So this is another card that I think has been kind of questioned a lot. I know. Uh, amazing, uh, or Jason Lai, I should say. I know him as amazing. Jason Lai uh, ran one in his deck, and then Jamie Faulkner posted his list with three. I like two. Uh, I was I ran three at the Road to Nats. The reason I went down to two is just because, you know, if you draw it early, it doesn't do anything. It's just a zero-cost enabler if you have to play it, but you don't have the engine yet. So you have to have the engine where... Uh, you have the cards in your um, graveyard. You don't man it, or you don't. You love it if you can get it after like turn two, right? If you play one after turn two and you can get that arcane train going, it's great. Um, I finished off a lot of games with uh, Burn Them All and like Asvali. Uh If we see a meta shift where more and more people are bringing in arcane barrier against Stromai then I can see this card going down to one or even cutting it entirely. But, you know, I, I don't mind, aside from like the Oldham match where they're pitching anyway, every other matchup is good if they're pitching their card out of their hand. Then they're having a hard time blocking you. They're having a hard time pitching uh, and organizing their hand. Like against Bravo, for instance, if he's bringing Arcane and he's pitching to block one Arcane each turn, then you're playing against him with like a three card hand, which is is fine. It's good. Um, everywhere else, they're not going to want to pitch to to get rid of an arcane. Um, aside from like you know Icelander, who could potentially get away with it. The Icelander matchup is in our favor. I've lost, you know, my fair share against Levi. I've beaten Levi a fair fair share of times. Not necessarily with this card, but I think it's still too good to to not include if we see a meta shift it's a it's definitely a meta call if oldham rises up and becomes the best deck in the format 
then we probably cut this card because we just there's other cards that need to go into this slot. But as of right now, two burn the malls. Um, it's just really, really good. And then the blues that I main deck are three passings, three Emrahmas, and three sweepings. So these two are mainly blue block threes, right? We like those. This one's way better because it's a really good late game. Um, uh, two cost for six attack is just really good as like a potential game winner. Uh, I've won a lot of games with uh, a blue Ember Maw on the back of the chain when they don't think six is coming. Um, so this card is very strong. Sweeping is mostly there for pitch. Sometimes you have to play it because you need the ash. Uh, hopefully you don't get to that point because pitching a red to play a one attack blue feels pretty bad. Um, but it is a block three, which is good. And then passing, um, I was, you know, I've been back and forth with how many I want to include. Um, and just with my defensive game plan, I like blocking out, playing a passing. It has the spectra keyword. So it's the only card in the deck that has spectra. I don't run pierce realities or anything like that. So, if like Bravo or somebody wants to deal with this, they take up their turn to attack this. And then you have a five card or four card hand to kind of deal with their, their turn um, and set back up. So I like passing a lot. Uh, if it does stick around, if they don't respect it, then you can kind of do some goofy stuff. If you have a double dragon turn, then you're in really, really good shape. So three passings, three Evermaws and three sweepings is main boarded right now. So that's my core. Uh, those are the cards that I run in every single matchup. Uh, right now, uh, I don't really take those out. Um, sometimes maybe, you know, I'll pull a, a sigil or something like that. But usually I'm pretty stubborn about my core. I don't really take those out. Uh, but yeah. So now I'll go to sideboard. Sideboard has, you know, a lot of tools. So. The thing about Illusionist, and you know, those of you that are coming from Prism, Dromai has a lot of tools. The the tough part about Dromai is knowing which tools are to be used against which matchup. And I think that's the, the learning curve and like the hard part, and that's what takes testing. And I'm not an expert on any of that stuff yet. Um, I don't try to be. But that's you know, this is what I have come up with. Um, I run two Oyuvias and then three Thamais. The Thamais I'll start with. This is because I play with Levi. Um, if you don't have any Icelanders in your meta or if your Icelanders aren't, you know, I, I hate, I hesitate to say the word great. Uh, those of you that follow the channel and have watched Levi's gameplay on Icelander, you can attest to how good he is. Um, these are necessary because of the meta that I'm in. Because I play with Levi so often, the Thamais are necessary. If you don't play with Icelander, if you don't play with Wizard, these cut instantly. You don't need them. The, you don't need them against Oldham. Uh, you don't need them against literally any other deck. I only run them because I play with Levi so often. And it's such an important card in that matchup um, against him that I can't run less than three. Um Otherwise, yeah, he just becomes a cut. You can put in, you know, Vincerakai if you're really feeling crazy or if you have a lot of, like, Briars in your meta or you have a lot of uh, Fi in your meta. Fi can deal with him, Vincerakai, that is, pretty easily. But he's still attacking for potentially nine, which is, you know, not to be ignored. Um uh, Whereas the defensive value that Thamai pre presents me against Icelander is just, you know, too great to ignore. Oyuvia is there for Guardian matchups. Um, she's there for the Mirror. She's there for Wizard matchups because the Ashwing generation is really important. Uh, a lot of times... Like I said, with the mirror, it's all board control. Whoever gets the most ash wings can deal with the other opponents or the opponent's ash wings uh, more effectively. And Oviuvia is huge there. 
against Guardian. You want to give them, you know, a bunch of targets to to control. If you can create a board of Ash Wings, eventually you're going to break through. Or, you know, you attack with an Ash Wing, they pop it, you're getting ghostly counters. So that's why OUV is really good there. So those are my sideboard dragons. Um, again, Thamai is mainly there. I, I, I always say this. Thamai is there because of one person. If you don't have that one person in your meta, you do not need this card uh, in your deck. You can run, you know, you don't have you don't have to run Vincerica. You can run three of the other cards that you like are that you like. Uh, this is just you know my meta and why I run that card. Um, then we have Command and Conquers. So tried and true, Command and Conquer still. Uh, I I incorrectly predicted that you know race face was going to be the best uh, generic in the game. Command and Conquer is still the best card in the game. Um, it's still Command and Conquer. It's great against Phi. It's great against Rune Blades that they where they want their uh, they want their arsenal. Uh, Command and Conquer is just so good. Um, it fits the the red theme. You know it's fits with Furnace. Just it it ticks all the right boxes. It blocks for three. Um, so yeah, three command and conquers. I think that's just mandatory in pretty much every deck. I would say it's just, it, it, it is still the king of all cards. Um, with that being said, I do also run three erase face. So, um, erase face has been underwhelming. I should say, um, it's terrible when you're playing it against Dromai. I play all six poppers. I only play six poppers in the mirror. Um, I don't play any defense reactions in the mirror. So this is kind of my defense reaction in the mirror is to, to play poppers instead. Um, don't cast this against Dromai. It does not work against Dromai. I've, I've explained this to many people as the Dromai player where they play it and they hit me with it. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. Um, dragons don't lose dragons. They don't, they don't lose that subtype. They lose Illusionist and they lose Draconic. They don't lose Dragon. So everything still has go again if you play a red card. So it doesn't really do much against Dromai, but it is a popper. Um, otherwise, it's good against Viscerai if you play it. It's good against Lexi if you play it because they can't fuse. It's good against Briar if you play it because they can't fuse. Um, but it's it's not great in the, the mirror. It's not if you're playing it, I should say. It's not really good in Defy either. Uh, the one thing that, you know, Jim and I have tested a bunch is playing a race face. And so many times I've played a race face and he's let it hit. And then all of a sudden it's like a double art of war, double strike turn where he doesn't attack with the weapon. And even though he doesn't have draconic links, he's still doing crazy stuff with like belittles and, you know, art of war and, uh, Things like that, double strikes. I, I I said that twice, but it's felt a lot worse in Defy than what I thought it was going to be. The Defy lists have kind of evolved past just all balls to the wall, a swing with draconic cards, um, and that's kind of taken away the value of a race face. So that's why uh, I don't necessarily run all of them, or I don't play it in that matchup. Uh, rakes are really good into the mirror. It's really good into guardian. Um, I pull them out against like Fi or Dorinthia or you don't want to give little baby targets where they can just kind of chip off and then get mass triggers or get counters. Um, uh, but a lot of times rakes are coming in depending on who you're playing. Uh, they're just really good value. Creating three ash wings is really strong in a lot of matchups, just not in the ones where on hits are a huge deal. Um, and then here's my defensive package. So I run Oasis, three Oasis, th uh, three Sinks, two Fates. These can be interchanged depending on what you're looking at. Um, I played Sand Covers at the uh, Rodinats. Uh, I took those out just because the Ash, um, the Ash requirement was a little bit too. Uh, too much but you don't you can play sand cover i think you can kind of interchange these as you will uh i'm very likely to go up to three and go nine just to play a little bit more defensive oasis is really good again into my meta 
uh, with uh, Icelander. It's really good at dodging. Uh, Guardian dominates because it's an instant. Similar to Sand Cover, you can play two defense reactions or a defense reaction out of your hand and Oasis out of your hand at the same time and cover eight, which is really good. Um, but yeah, I, I I like having eight. I would go up to nine if I you know found an extra slot, which I can easily do. Uh, but eight has felt good as my defense package. Um, and then the extra blues that I run. So three billowing mirages, two semblances, and then one energy potion. A lot of times I'll go up to, like usually for every matchup, I'll run 10 blues. So I'll sub one of these in for every matchup. Uh, a lot of times it's the energy potion because if I block out, I can still play Epot and then set up like a, you know, an optimized turn if I draw him or whatever it is, or you know, it makes Tomaltai easier, or whatever it is. Um, the Billowings are really good in the mirror because you're not only attacking an Ash Wing, you're creating an Ash Wing. So like if I play a pitch of red, swing with Billowing at their Ash Wing, create an Ash Wing, swing my Ash Wing that I just created at their other Ash Wing, and now I have a better board state. Um, blue Billowing is, I think, better than red Billowing. I don't like red Billowing. It just didn't do enough for me. Um, the Semblances, I think three might be correct, which... I know people think this is a bad card, but you know, if you're in that long game with Guardian and you're, you know, you're setting up the Ghostly, you want three because you can, you know, swing with Ghostly semblance, swing with Ghostly semblance, swing with Ghostly semblance. I know it's a lot of resources, but we're pitch stacking, right? We're pitching our blues, we're we're setting that play up. Um, so I think three might be correct. I've gotten away with two and it hasn't felt bad. Um uh, but I do think you want potentially three for that matchup. And then the energy potion has been really good. Um, I've been really impressed. I don't think I would run more than one energy potion. Um, personally, the the difference, the, the only reason I would is if I cut some cards and I go straight defensive. I've seen a lot of lists that run three Oasis, three uh, Sinks, three Fates, and then three or three slash two sand covers so they're running like nine defensive options sorry for the glare um and then if i were to do that and play super defensive maybe you go up in energy potions as well just because you're blocking out blocking out setting up setting up setting up and then you're having a huge like late game where you kind of run them out of threats and now you have this like massive like board with a ton of resources um i can definitely see that I haven't tested that style yet, but again, if the if the meta dictates that we go that route, uh, then then that's kind of where I'll go. I, I'm very adaptable. I'm constantly changing this list um, and going through things. But yeah, that's the uh, the list. That was kind of my thoughts on why each card in the deck exists. Uh, again, I'm not saying that this is correct. I'm not saying that this is, you know, the, the end all be all. This is like how you run it. She's tough. She's not an easy hero to play. She's not an easy hero to pilot. Um, and she's a difficult hero to build. And I think a lot of her choices dictate or are dictated by what your meta is looking like. If you're running in, if your meta is like, you know, 90% Phi, then I don't know if you run Dromai. As bad as that is to say, it's tough to play right now. Um, I know that he has quickly become public enemy number one. Uh, he's becoming the most represented deck in the field, and that makes it hard for us to play this you know, consistently and well. Uh, I am going to chug through it. I'm going to keep making changes. I'm going to keep posting videos based on those changes. Um, but yeah, I am interested to see, you know, what have you guys found, um, based on Jamie's list, based on Jason's list that he posted, there's a YouTube video that you could search for on the scar for a scar YouTube channel. Um, uh, let me know what you guys have tested and found. There are a bunch of cards that I have that, you know, I, I've wanted to test. Miraging Metamorph is one of them that I haven't had yet. That's That would be like a cut for Emmermaw, 
like I could put in that. It's a one for seven instead of a two for eight. So that might be a, a better call than where I'm at now. Um, cards like that. I had Ravenous Ravel in here that I just recently cut. Ravel, the reason I cut that was because um, I found that the two block was you know too big of a hindrance. And then if I'm blocking out and then all I have is Ravel in my hand, I Ravel and then they just take four vanilla damage. They don't care. And now they have, you know, a five card hand where I'm back now at four or whatever. And I'm kind of, you know, stuck. So Rabble kind of made things awkward a little bit. I know they turn on all the dragons. I know it's a great card. But Rabble only works if you have a board of dragons. And if they're not killing your dragons, you're probably going to win anyway. So Rabble, I think, got awkward, I, I should say. But I I was a big Rabble, you know, believer. I, I loved Rabble. It kind of pained me to take that out but that was the reason i cut that but yeah that's my deck let me know if you guys have any questions about it um i can post a link in the the description as i always do um i'm interested to see how you guys have been building or what you guys have been finding let me know um and uh i'd be i am very open to ideas i want this hero to work um I know it's tough sledding right now with uh, with Phi and stuff like that, and Viscerai kind of being the top the top dogs. The added blues help with Viscerai a little bit with Melrune gloves, so it's not as bad of a matchup as like you know Phi is. But you know, uh, otherwise, just you know, let me know. I am definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say. But uh, as all my videos are, I'm glad that I was able to keep this under 20 minutes. Thank you guys for uh, watching throughout the entire thing. With the Roundtable of Wraith, this has been Ryan. Uh, and until next time, see you guys later.